The government have announced their new definition of extremism. So groups which incite hatred and undermine democracy will be named and changed as extremists. They're not going to, we don't know the names of the groups yet, but we're getting the new definition. Uh, people that fall below the terrorism threshold but continue to promote violence, hatred or intolerance will be banned from working with any public body. So this is all going to be announced by Michael Gove, the community secretary, but he was advising all of this by the former Labour MP, now the government's advisor on political violence and disruption, Lord Warney, who joins us now. Lord Warney, good morning to you. Um, why do we need this definition to be changed? And if you could explain in layman's terms what, what's it been changed to and how will it affect people? Good morning. I, I do think the progress being made by the government today on this is welcome and what they are doing is actually narrowing down the the existing focus on on extremism which had been broad to a level where it, it was actually quite difficult to sometimes to understand certainly to interpret and enforce into uh, meaningful action so so what this revised definition does is it focuses on the the attempts by some groups, some individuals to systematically undermine our liberal democracy. So a kind of harm being perpetrated on the country, which is is often below that violent terrorism threshold, but um, w w for which the our security services have rightly had a, a focus on in recent decades, but nevertheless can do really significant harm in um, undermining the values that are central to us as a country. And, and so I'm, I'm welcoming the fact that we can be uh, more active and, and proud of the fact that we are a parliamentary democracy, that we should seek to protect it. And what must flow from this is the really difficult work to, as you say, Andrew, to, to identify which groups are falling beyond the acceptable threshold in, yes. uh, in seeking to undermine democracy and, that, and, and removing funding and support from those groups. I mean, look, the, it sounds incredibly well-intentioned, but at the moment, if you've got groups who are quite vocal about their dislike of other religions or even this country, we know who they are because they feel free to say that out loud. If they now know that you are policing what they say as opposed to what they do, they become much harder to identify. They're going to still be thinking these things. They're just not going to say them out loud. Well, it, it, it's even more difficult and con uh, conceptually uh, and... Um, uh, and in practice to police uh, private thought, and, and no one is is suggesting that. But where I think the harm can be done is by encouraging this sense, actually, that our um, uh, 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 encouraging the sense that we should all be striving for for systems that are in direct opposition to our parliamentary democracy. And I think if we can be more focused on saying that that is unacceptable. It may, it may not be illegal, but we certainly shouldn't have a, 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 a government public system that can actually end up pumping public money in various ways into supporting groups who are actually at their heart um, they want to dismantle the the system that we are um, that we are lucky enough to enjoy in the United Kingdom. So all of this is all of this They'll is just really get cleverer. They'll just get cleverer. They know sure, you're watching sure. what they say now. If somebody is saying things which are against this country or against a religious group, those departments handing out that money should be sufficiently smart to not give them that money anyway. We don't need this legislation so that these groups become much cleverer at disguising how they feel because now they know you're watching them. Now they know they could get mm. in trouble for what they say. They're just not going to say it. We don't need this, do we? If people are doing their jobs well, properly, I we don't need it. Yeah, I mean, I understand the argument, but I mean, you could apply that really to to, to any law. There is, I think, a a point in having laws that can can focus the mind on 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 trying to uh, to help public institutions understand what is unacceptable behaviour. Because I think there are there is often confusion. There can be confusion about where the boundaries ought to lie, and even if you know where you think the boundary ought to be. Often when you are an individual organisation or grant giving body, it can be difficult to understand whether this organisation uh, is across the line or, or not. And so uh, none of this will be perfect, but I think it can give 
a greater level of uh, of clarity about who we are as a country, what we stand for, the kind of and and the bar that that there ought to be to be um, engaging with um, with mainstream institutions and 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 being potentially in receipt of public money for doing so.